So one of the things that I noticed in State of Decay 2 is that I don't feel like the way Undead Labs handles damage to zombies in the game is uh, is really good for the, the way the game sh ought to play, like the way that they are designing the game. Like the, the damage system is working against what Undead Labs is trying to do. And I first really began to notice this when Undead Labs started adding in all of those little weapon packs, like both before the Bounty Broker officially appeared and after. I just wasn't excited about these weapons. And sure, some of it is that, you know, I'm not super into the, the cosmetics in the game, but I kept noticing, I'm like, you know, th these guns, they're just like different versions of the same thing. They look a little bit different. They have different names, but there, there's no tactical reason to choose this weapon over that weapon. And I thought, you know, why, why is that? You know, like, what's the deal with these weapons? And it has to do with damage. So basically, the, uh, the argument that I'm going to put forward is that the current way that Undead Labs handles damage to zombies in State of Decay 2, it makes weapons less fun to use. And especially because it... It makes weapons not kind of like live up to your expectation of them. And it's clogging up the design space. And design space is basically this idea of how much you can change or add to a game without the game just completely collapsing, breaking, or needing like a massive complete redesign in order to accommodate the change. Like basically how much wiggle room do you have in the game to, to do something with before you, you know, something goes really wrong. And so the first key, if damage is the problem, we need to identify well, why is damage the problem? And the issue is that for the most part, with the exception of a few cases, zombies have to be killed by headshots. And now this is important because it's a central component of the zombie mythology that zombies are defeated by destroying their heads. So they should be killed by headshots. That makes sense. The issue is that zombies, for the most part, with a few exceptions, they have to be destroyed with headshots. Uh, if you take a gun, and the exception here would be uh, the 50 caliber rifle, but if you just took a gun and you just start putting rounds into the zombie's body, like, uh, it's not going to die. Like, uh, before I even made this video... I took out the, you know, one of the rifles and I blasted this zombie's legs off, arms off, and I just put like a whole magazine into its torso and it just kind of wiggles around like, oh, but it, did, it didn't actually die because, well, I wasn't shooting it in the head. And, uh, you know, some other examples might include, you know, running a zombie over with a car. I'm actually not sure. Like, its head might explode when you hit it with a car. Like, I didn't observe that. But what's funny is uh, e even some of the non-headshot methods, they still destroy the head. Like, if you, if you burn a zombie in State of Decay 2, uh, when it's done burning, its head explodes and it falls over. So, so even, even the non-headshot strategies you might employ still headshot. The, the zombies. So, I mean, I guess you could say if you throw a Molotov into a crowd of zombies, you just got like a, a sick trick shot, 30 kills with one headshot from a, a glass bottle. You could say something like that. It, it's it's kind of silly. Now, this is like just kind of identifying the issue, but the, the question, we got to link it to, th this is what I'm saying is the problem. Let's link it to some kind of effect it causes. And so first, for melee weapons, which I think are less impacted than guns. But in melee weapons, the issue is that lethality is just such a better stat over dismemberment. And that's because, well, you want the zombies dead, not dismembered. And so if you have one bladed weapon that's really high in dismemberment versus one bladed weapon that's really high in lethality, well, I mean, you want the lethality weapon because it's just going to kill the zombies faster, and no matter how many times you hit the zombie, they're going to die one way or another. It's not like, uh, melee weapons are not like guns. If you hit the zombie enough times with a melee weapon, eventually its head's just going to blow up. So, it doesn't even matter if you, like, dismember them because you're still going to kill them eventually and lethality just gets the job done sooner. And like I said, like, you just want them dead. You don't want them dismembered. You just want them to be gone. And 
what this ultimately does is it just means that, you know, why would you use a dismemberment focused weapon unless you got the quest to, you know, dismember the zombie arms or something? And the answer is that, you know, you just really wouldn't. And even for the really high quality weapons where they've got really high lethality and really high dismemberment, well, in those cases, the dismemberment is just completely overshadowed by the lethality. The lethality just like dominates the stat of the weapon because it just kills the zombies so much faster. So in melee weapons, the this issue we have with how zombie damage is, is basically uh, registered in the game, it just makes one of the stats really not. It's like it's like if you dismember a zombie, oh. A lot of times I don't even notice. It's not even something I pay attention to, but guns. Guns is where it's really a big deal. And that's because, with few exceptions, you need to shoot a zombie in the head to kill it. And it doesn't matter the size of the bullet, with some exceptions. So here's some exceptions. The 50 caliber rifles, they'll, they'll just destroy the zombie outright. And the other exception is the juggernaut. The juggernaut was patched so that it would react to to more damage. So higher powered weapons, they do make a difference against juggernauts, but juggernaut is just one enemy. It's not a very common enemy. So it like basically 90% of the game, the power of your weapon, it doesn't matter because all you need to do is shoot them in the head. And on top of that, I, to be more specific, you have to shoot them in the head. You can't shoot them in the body to destroy the zombie, to like kill the zombie. That's what you're trying to do. You want the zombie to be dead. And so with a gun, you require a headshot. And this is relevant because, as I said, with a melee weapon, if you hit the zombie enough times, it's going to die. In fact, you have to, for the most part, unless you use a, an execution, you have to do it this way. But with a gun, you could miss the head repeatedly. You could hit the body repeatedly. But until you score that headshot, it's not going to die. And so one of the ways this immediately impacts the game because now we're so okay so that that's what's the problem the problem is damage it's causing this issue where stats are being irrelevant and like guns the, the damage is it's not providing a lot of value it's mainly just about shooting a zombie so what is the cause of this issue well one of the things is once you make this connection that weapon damage for guns in particular doesn't matter well then you no longer think about guns in terms of their power. You start to think about other things like, well, ammo economy. You're like, well, if a 45 caliber round kills a zombie just as effectively as a 22 caliber round, but 22 caliber rounds, they use up less ammo to produce, so you can make more 22 caliber rounds per unit of ammo you have, well, then you're like, well, why don't I just use 22 caliber rounds? Why don't I use nine millimeter rounds? Why don't I use crossbow bolts? You know, they're the most cost efficient. And if power doesn't matter, then I should just use those. And there's a ton of those weapons. There's a ton of different kinds of 22 caliber rifles. There's automatic ones. There's the uh, extremely good Echo S1 revolver the and the Echo S2 rifle. Both of those are insanely good, high efficiency 22 caliber weapons. There's automatic 22 caliber weapons. There's high capacity 22 caliber weapons like the fake A47 and the um, the Preppers 1022. So there, it's not like there's like a lack of diversity for these weapons. And so you just have this issue where you, you you just kind of throw this whole stat away, like gun damage, dismemberment. You just don't care about these anymore. And I think that's like a big problem when, especially because like damage, you would think any game that has combat, you would think damage is like a really relevant thing to to have to consider. And, uh, you, and you know, I know some people, what about juggernauts? And I'm going to bring that up now. So what about juggernauts? This is one of the areas where you would think that damage would matter. But we're going to talk specifically in regards to Nightmare Zone, because if it's good in Nightmare Zone, it's going to be good in Standard Zone. And if caution is warranted in Nightmare Zone, then if you're a brand new player, the caution would also be warranted in Standard Zone. So the issue is that, uh, generally speaking, you just wouldn't shoot a juggernaut out in the field away from your base. In the Nightmare Zone, if you are in the early game where ammo is really important, you just wouldn't want to shoot the Juggernaut. If you had, 
I don't know, like a full stack of 45 caliber rounds. And so, oh, wow, these do more damage. So they, they might give me an advantage against the juggernaut. Would you want to like throw 30, 40, would you want to throw a full stack of 45 caliber ammo against the juggernaut? Like what would that accomplish? What, what you'd get like, I guess you'd get a hundred influence. That's not worth it at all. You just wouldn't, there, there's just no reward from fighting a, a juggernaut. You just run away from it. You just be like, no, I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to sneak past it. I'm just going to go somewhere else. And if it sees me, I'm just going to run away because there's just no reason I should throw my limited ammo in the beginning of a nightmare zone at a juggernaut. Now, if you're on the other side of the field where, you know, you're really established and you've just got like a ton of ammo now and you're like, it doesn't really matter if you throw a whole stack of ammo at a juggernaut. Well, it doesn't matter then. You know, you're so far into the game that you can just do whatever you want. Like, you're super powerful at this point like if you were going to kill a juggernaut you would do something like in the early game you'd do something like i don't know i'll lure it to an ai enclave and we'll just kind of like overwhelm it and if it blood plagues somebody it's just some ai enclave it's not my enclave you might also kill the juggernaut by using a sniper tower and you know maybe you'd use your gun to thin out the other zombies where it's more effective and you would use the sniper tower specifically to conserve your ammo because you wouldn't want to throw all your ammo at it or you'd use like a uh, bouncing boris the bouncing boris is actually really good against juggernauts a highly economical way of removing them you you just wouldn't shoot all of this ammo at a juggernaut. So the funny thing is, even though higher powered weapons are more relevant against the juggernaut, it's not really relevant in practice because you, when you bring it to your community, you, you would be equipping your community with high powered weapons either way. It's not like you're making a strategic choice. Of, oh my God, you know, you just do it. You're just going to equip them with the best weapons you've got to, to guard the base. That's just something that you would naturally do. So that's not even, that hasn't even changed anything. You would have done that anyway. So that's what's just so ironic about the change in the juggernaut. That's it. I still think it should have been done. I still think it's a good idea, but I feel like that's, only the beginning. So what's my solution to the issue? Well, it should be pretty obvious. The solution is that cumulative non-headshots need to be allowed to kill zombies. And what that's going to do, is, or the way it's going to work rather, is that small caliber weapons, I don't know when you would choose the, the point of where this no longer applies, but basically small caliber bullets they don't kill zombies. This way, they have to score headshots. Whereas the heavier caliber weapons, they can just shred their body, obliterate the zombie. They can kill it without requiring a headshot. But of course, as I said, part of the zombie mythology, a headshot should always take out the zombie immediately. And as a result of this, you are making the game easier. Like If body shots can kill a zombie, you are making the game easier. So it is going to require some kind of rebalancing to the zombies numbers or maybe to the to the availability of ammunition or maybe both but you know like th these things don't occur in a vacuum if you allow heavier caliber weapons to kill zombies without body shots you are making the game easier so you'll need to find some other way to compensate but i still think it's something that should be done now if we employ this what what are the benefits going to be well right off the bat the weapon variety, the huge amount of weapons we have in State of Decay 2, they're going to become way, way more valuable. And this is something that Undead Labs, that this is what they want to do. They want to add more guns into the game, but they don't, they just don't matter because for the most part, their stats don't matter. If they add a gun into the game, oh, look how neat this gun is. It shoots the weird 44 caliber hollow point rounds. Well, who cares? You're just shooting more expensive bullets that you need to score a headshot when you could just shoot them with the fake A47 or with the Echo S2. It doesn't matter. Like, if it's so sexy, it shoots these other bullets. All that matters is the headshot. But now, if the weapons can, if heavier caliber weapons can kill with body shots, then suddenly these weapons they're adding into the game could be more useful. You, you might scratch your chin and think about, oh, well, you know, now that I have this weapon, I have more tactical options. You know, maybe you build different kinds of ammo. Maybe instead of just making nothing but 9mm and 22 caliber rounds, you think about some of the other ammo types you make based on the available weapons. And... Another issue is that 
you're, the the weapons are going to start kind of getting like a roll, or they're going to start getting like a, a, a an association with them. The small caliber weapons that can't kill with body shots, they're just going to come to be associated with like these are your precision weapons. These are like your gunslinger weapons. They're known for their high efficiency and their precision, and you know they're going to be favored by the people who are the sneakier, the more the the people who are more into like saving as much as possible by precise headshots. That's what these small caliber weapons are going to be known for, while as the heavier caliber weapons, they're going to be known for, like, their destructive power when, you know, oh, the going gets tough, you break out, like, the Eternal Guard's infinite rage and just, like, waste a huge crowd of zombies. You know, oh, no, it's like the gloves are coming off. I'm going to cause some serious damage. And it also means, like, you know, like, hollow point bullets, it's like, that. you'd think that's like, oh my god, what tactical difference do hollow point bullets make in State of Decay right now? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Like, it's just the name of the bullets. It's just letters. It's just various letters and numbers configured in a specific way, and it makes it sound like, okay, if you've never played State of Decay before, and you, oh, this weapon shoots uh, 44 caliber hollow point magnum rounds. That sounds important. Like, ooh, that sounds sexy. It must mean it's good. Well, no, it doesn't mean that, because the bullets, they don't make any difference. But if you were able to actually have hollow point rounds, I don't know, they do something different, because the mechanism of a hollow point bullet is different than a standard bullet. Like, they go inside of you, and then they kind of, like, expand and rip you apart from, uh, in the inside. So it's like, they should do something different, but they don't. And by allowing more nuanced damage and options to kill zombies except b beyond just headshots will make these weapons that you would expect to perform differently because their name gives you the idea that they're going to do something different will actually do something different now. Also, the weapons are going to better live up to the expectation of the player. Like, a shotgun is now just going to, like, blast the zombie away without needing a headshot because of the way spread works. You could have, like, what you believe to be a clean shot on the zombie, and because the random spread did not contact the zombie's head, he doesn't get blasted away. But now the firepower of the shotgun won't need a headshot. You could just, like, blast... You could, you could like, clip them in the shoulder and maybe you blast them apart anyways. And... That is going to live up more to what someone would expect a shotgun to work. The fully automatic weapon, like the Eternal Guard's Infinite Rage. You know, what people really want to do with that weapon is switch it to the fully automatic mode, and they just want to go like Rambo. They just want to like sweep the weapon left and right, and they just want to mow down like a huge crowd of zombies, but that doesn't really happen without headshots. Like, yes, you might knock them over through the force, but they're going to get back up and they'll be like, I'm not dead yet. You didn't kill me. And it just, it turns out that, oh, well, you know, the better way to use the Eternal Guard is just to switch it to semi-automatic and just have like a weapon that reloads every 150 rounds and just pick off their heads. It just doesn't live up to what you, the player, would want from seeing a weapon that has a 150 round capacity. It also means that brakes are even better. Like one of the like, like Undead Labs wants brakes to be better. Well, the main thing brakes are supposed to do is add more damage. Too bad adding more damage doesn't matter except against a juggernaut. And in the case of fighting a juggernaut, once again, if you had the early game and you had a one stack of 45 caliber ammo and you're like, oh, I'm going to put a brake on my weapon to throw all the ammo I've got to kill one juggernaut, not worth it. And late in the game, you would just equip all your guys with brakes anyways. You you would just put on the best weapons and put on the brakes anyway. So it, it's, it doesn't matter. You would be equipping the best weapons if your base was defending against the Juggernaut anyways. But now, if, if a weapon that wasn't quite powerful enough to destroy a zombie with body shots, suddenly you put a brake on it, and now it can kill a zombie with body shots. Whoa, my God. Suddenly that weapon has a new flavor and suddenly breaks are a lot more useful. And it's all because the damage doesn't let you kill zombies in body shots. Like that's why I feel like it's just such a confining thing. 
What about shooting skills? Like assault and sharpshooting. What what if you could kill zombies with body shots and you had sharpshooting and you break out your Eternal Guard's infinite rage and now you like sweep through them, the bullets are like passing through the zombies and they're just mowing them all down. Like it's just insane because now the weapon lives up to your expectations and the skill delivers on real firepower. And same with assault. Like, if there were weapons like shotguns, like where it actually, the recoil would actually be a bit more relevant because now you don't have to worry about lining up your headshots. The, the recoil management from assault, I mean, I'm, I may not be, no, there's not a kid around. Assault is still going to be a super smelly skill. It's going to be a little bit better, though, if you can kill zombies with body shots. And really, that's my point, is that the game will be a little bit better. Maybe not insanely better, but I feel it would be a step in the right direction. And it would also mean that the weapons that Undead Labs are periodically adding into the game suddenly can be more meaningful. So that's what I think. And that's why I think that the damage in State of Decay is a problem. I don't think it can be fixed in State of Decay 2 as usual. I think it would be a State of Decay 3 thing to consider. But... That's the issue. That's my solution. What do you think down in the comment section? Was this something that you, you even thought about or even made that connection to until now? Like maybe it's, oh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't have a problem shooting zombies in the head. Not a big deal to me. But for me, I think it's just something that could make the game. I mean, like still a fun game without lethal body shots. But how much more fun could the game be if the design space were opened that higher powered guns or weaker guns with brakes suddenly could kill zombies with body shots. And as it wouldn't even be overpowered, I don't think, because you are being less ammo efficient, maybe at the point of the game where you have just a ton of ammo. But once again, it's a rebalancing issue. Like maybe that means more zombies need to be in the game. Maybe it means ammo should be a bit more scarce. Like, I don't know what you would do to balance it. I'm just addressing that there's a problem and that these are the benefits you would get, or at least I believe you would get these benefits from resolving it. Anyways, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Thanks for listening. Like this video if it was interesting. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. Of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.